Hey everybody, we continue our discussion of this agent of change, that key competency. So the agent of change understands, demonstrates, and exerts influence by building trusting relationships to act as a catalyst for change. So the agent of change understands if I'm going to get something done today, it's not going to be because I have a title, it's not going to be because I'm a taskmaster, it's not going to be because I can intimidate, it's going to be because I know how to build trusting relationships. And through those relationships, I'll influence change. That's the key. Fine, Ian, but how do I do that? Yesterday, we talked about listening. Yesterday, I introduced this concept of the 100 cups of coffee. So for the next three days, we're going to unpack the 100 cups of coffee strategy. Before we can do that, we have to understand the two truisms of today's changing times that the strategy takes into consideration. Truism number one, people get inundated with information a day. People get overwhelmed with in, in, uh, information a day, even in small communities. And whether that's radio, whether that's TV, whether that's the internet and a banner ad or a website, whether that's an email or a text message, whether that's a flyer or a brochure, people get tons of information. So we have to have a way to penetrate that so that people become aware of our thing or our initiative or, 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 or our desire or our goal. How do we get people to pay attention? So put that over here. Then the other truism I think in these changing times is this that people are desperately looking for something to connect with. I don't think people are apathetic. I actually think people have just been let down over and over and over again. I think that when they find something that's authentic and sincere and real, they're willing to put their time, talent, and treasure into it. But most of the time they don't find that. So the approach that's utilized to engage people, any stakeholder, has to take those two things into consideration. That's why I think the relational approach, the relational marketing strategy, the relational strategy to expand my sphere of influence is key. I call that strategy 100 cups of coffee. Now, what does that mean? That means that if it takes 100 cups of coffee with you to build that relationship, I'll do it. That means that I'm going to sit and talk with you and better understand your needs, your wants, and your desires. And then and only then will I share mine with yours in an attempt to gain alignment between what you're doing and what I'm doing to create a synergistic and collaborative relationship. Over the next couple days, we'll talk about how to do that. So again, the agent of change understands, demonstrates, and exerts influence through the trusting relationships that they've developed, and then through those trusting relationships, they can make things happen. They can change things. Step number one to this, identifying the people of influence. You see it right there on your screen. Identifying the people of influence. Now look, that's different than identifying the people of prominence. See, usually when we want to do a community-based activity, we want, to, we want to do a new initiative, we feel like we got to get all the people of prominence on board. All the people that everyone sees all the time. But sometimes the people that we see all the time, the people of prominence, aren't the people that can influence anything. Think about it. You know some people that everybody knows that everybody thinks is a joke. Even sometimes holding positions of authority that don't get things done. So your first step is to identify those individuals that actually influence the situation or those individuals that will be key to you getting done what you want to get done. And I, I want you to make a list of them. And for, for exercise purposes, I want you to list three. I want you to list three people of influence today that you need to be on board with where you want to go and what you want to do. Not people of prominence, people of influence. Could be the mom with the loudest mouth in the school. Could be the administrative assistant to the general manager or the CEO. Could be the mid-level bureaucrat or mid-level civil servant. 
because they set the agenda for the director or whatever. Who are the people that actually get things done? I always say it this way. Who are the people that when they post something on their Facebook page, people actually do it. They just don't like it. Person of influence. List three of them. You could list more if you'd like. But for just the exercise of this week, just list three. And then I want you to color code them. Red. They have no idea what you're doing. They have no idea and they don't care. Yellow. They may know of you or may know of the thing you want to do, but they're indifferent. They don't care either way. Green. They know of you or they know of the thing you want to do, but they're certainly not a champion for your cause. So I identify the people of influence. I, I then color code them based on how I think they're reacting to what we're doing. Now why? Because I only have a limited amount of time. I only have a limited amount of energy and I only have a limited amount of resources at my disposal. So I have to be laser-like focused in my attempt to build that relationship with those people of influence. Now hopefully the result of that is that I move them one notch. If they're red against it, they move to being indifferent. And if they're yellow, indifferent, they move to being green for it. Now notice I didn't say that they should go from red to green. I think that's unrealistic. But frankly, if I can just get the person who's opposed to move to yellow and shut their mouth, that's a victory. Why the people of influence? Because I know with them comes 10 others or 15 others because they have influence over a stakeholder group. But I can't hit the whole stakeholder group. All I can do is build the relationship with the person of influence. So step number one, identify the person of influence, not the person of prominence. Then color code them based on how I think they're going to react to the thing that we want to do. That's all you need to do for today. Tomorrow, we'll talk about what I do with that list and how I build that trusting relationship in the third day. Okay? So, agent of change. Demonstrates, exerts, influence through trusting relationships. You're going to go have 100 cups of coffee. Before you can do that, identify the people you need to have those coffees with. We'll see you tomorrow.